we've reached Avi Melamed. He is a Middle East geopolitical intelligence analyst and the founder of Inside the Middle East. He joins us now from Miami. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Hello, Arthi. Thank you for having me. Now, I do want to begin with the full offensive as Israel pushes further south, an area that was once declared safe. What do you make of that? Well, um, as expected, Israel is expanding its military operation on the ground in Gaza Strip. Uh, to a large extent, now the major focus is more and more towards the center and the southern part of Gaza Strip, particularly uh, the area of Khan Yunis, which is considered to be a major stronghold of Hamas, including the possibility that its major uh, commanders and leaders um, are based in, in that area. So what we see parallel to that is that Israel has been applying a system of pre-evacuation of civilians from this area. Uh, Israel distributed a map and, and divided to blocks, basically ordering or asking people, civilians, to evacuate a couple of hours before the Israeli uh, operation uh, uh, is rolling in. And this is part of the whole Israeli attempt to try and, of course, to minimize as much as possible. Now, while <clears throat> that may be something that we certainly hear, hear from the Israeli Defense Forces, that they are trying to minimize uh, civilian casualties, we've heard from the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, it appears that there have been uh, as many as 16,000 deaths. And so, you know, the southern part of Gaza was an area that was de deemed safe. Initially, that was an area people were instructed to go. And now that is becoming an area that is a target. So is there anywhere safe left in Gaza? Well, again, we have to be very cautious when we look at the information coming from Gaza. I don't know to say how many people got killed in Gaza Strip. Uh, remember, these are figures that are coming from the Ministry of Health of Gaza Strip, which is ruled by Hamas. I don't know to say whether those figures are accurate or not. I would just say that we have to be extremely cautious, particularly when we look at information coming from Hamas-affiliated sources. As for the southern part of Gaza Strip, Yet again, I mean, um, Israel has been publishing formally and, and sending messages to the Palestinians in Gaza Strip in different ways, including electronic and non-electronic ways, to, to, to evacuate. Israel designated some safe corridors for that purpose, and, uh, allocating some specific regions in the southwest part of Gaza Strip, which is closer to the sea, and actually ordering or guiding the civilians to move uh, down to those areas. Again, we are looking at a situation where this is a fierce fight and taking place in a massively urban area. And one of the major challenges, of course, is the fact that Hamas is deeply entrenched inside this uh, civilian area of uh, Gaza people. So it's obviously an enormous uh, a task uh, as much as possible under those conditions to try and to really minimize as much as possible the loss of innocent life, which, of course, it's very unfortunate when it happens, but we have to remember this is the situation on the ground. And, and no question, during a time of war, we have to carefully scrutinize the information coming out of both the Israeli Defense Forces and uh, coming out of, for example, the Hamas-run Gaza Health Authority. And it's important that we scrutinize the information uh, that comes out during a time of war from either side here, as much can <clears throat> often be part of propaganda. We do want to talk a little bit about a meeting that happened today involving the families of hostages that were taken during that October 7th attack. Uh, and they they want the return of hostages to be a priority. Is that something that you foresee being made a priority, given what we're seeing right now? And we do know that we certainly heard that the offensive could harm hostages as well. Yes, well, definitely. I mean, look, uh, the Israeli government ordered the Israeli Defense Forces following the Hamas attack on October 7th uh, with two major objectives. One is to bring the hostages back home, and the other one is to topple down Hamas rule in Gaza Strip. Those two objectives basically, to a large extent, in a way, are kind of like on one hand collide. But on the other hand, they are basically those obtaining those two objectives is ap actually can be done in a parallel to, I would say, parallel to trajectories. And in fact, what I have been seeing saying since day one of this war and up until now, I think that my observation was very accurate. The Israeli government fight that war as if there are no hostages. And at the same time, the Israeli government uh, tried to release these hostages as if there is no war, which you can understand by this definition how complicated this situation is. It, obviously, enormously, uh, the, the whole issue of the hostages is enormously significant. Uh, particularly when we are talking about Israeli public opinion, particularly when we are talking about the ultra-sensitivity, I would say, 
of Israelis generally to the whole issue of uh, the hostages and the abducted and so on and so on. The Israeli government here has to, in the end of the day, navigate a very complex challenge uh, because on the one hand, as we saw, Hamas is using and will try as much as possible use to exhaust this card, quote unquote, of hostages that he keeps in order to try and to hope by doing that to prolong ceasefires fires and then in the end of the day to survive or to save its rule in Gaza Strip. But on the other hand, the major card, Israel has it it's in its possession to basically put pressure on Hamas to end the story of the hostages is no other than the military card. So you see that in the end of the day, there is a reality that for both sides, because of the different needs and the different objectives for the same issue, meaning the issue of the hostages for the same, uh, for the both sides, in the end of the day, what we see is the picture on the ground that at the same time, Israeli forces are deepening their um, military actions on the ground, trying as much as possible to target Hamas, knowing and doing, I would guess, uh, um, an enormous efforts to try and to avoid uh, damaging or harming the hostages held held by Hamas. I believe that Israeli government and Israeli uh, military planners are aware, of course, of that of that fact. But it's a given fact that has to be taken into consideration. And we certainly know governments around the world are urging Israel to make sure that much care is taken in the protection of civilians. Thank you so much for your time today, Avi. We appreciate it.